Welcome to Prepper Nation. I am John. You're probably aware of this. <laughs> How you doing this morning? If you're not aware, hey, welcome to Prepper Nation. I am John. Thank you very much for being here. Thank y'all for shooting the thumbs up and hitting subscribe on the channel, helping us fight censorship this morning. Can you survive the horde? You say some, what are you talking about? So we're going to get into it. Uh, chaos is coming. Can I get an amen in the chat? Can everybody raise their hand? And you know what? If you don't think chaos is coming here in 2024 in America, please drop in the, in the comments or the live chat. Let me know why. You know, uh, you know, no harm, no foul there, but I would like to know your reasoning for that. I think most people out there can agree that chaos is, chaos is coming. I would say in and around November, probably leading into November. So we're going to talk about how to prepare for that chaos this morning, how to prepare for large protests that I believe are coming. It's a gut feeling, a heart feeling, if you will. I think we're going to see a lot of major protests. And I'm not talking about the kind of protests. Remember that show Married with Children, the No Man Club? I'm not talking about those kind of protests. I'm talking about the kind that shut down bridges, that shut down major highways, the kind that they get cold at night, so, you know, they got to start fires and stuff like this. Y'all get what I'm saying. So here's how I would survive. Here's how I would be prepping for that if I, if I were in a city. Obviously, I'm not, but if you're in a city, we got some smart cats here at Prepper Nation. If you're in a city uh, and you've been prepping for a while, add to this conversation, if you could, please through the comment section or through the live chat, uh, because I, you know, I want different perspectives, but this is my perspective. Okay. So the first question I'm asking myself, should I stay or should I go? I'm trying really hard not to, not to break out and sing that, <laughs> that, that song, but, uh, should I stay or should I go? That is the most valuable question in my opinion, because what you decide right there, if you're going to stay at home and try and ride, ride it out, this massive horde that's coming, sometimes it's called the golden horde or whatever in the prepping community, call it whatever you want to, the zombie horde, you know, the flip-flop brigade, whatever. Are you going to stay at home and, and try and ride this storm out? Or are you going to go? Meaning, are you going to to bug out. And I think it it really depends on where I was at, like what city I'm at. And I'm looking for road signs, not, not in the literal sense. I never pay attention to road signs, son. I'm always either using GPS or my wife is telling me where to, where to go because women know everything, but I digress. Um, I'm looking for road signs. Like I, I'm going to give you a few examples them erecting fences at the Capitol. You know, let's say we're we're middle of September and fences are starting to go up. This is a roadmap telling me, okay, our government expects chaos at some point here in this area. And if I'm close to that area, now it's really time to make a decision one way or the other. Um, LEOs. So, you know, some of you are LEOs or you know LEOs and you'll hear through the grapevine, as we say here in the South, that LEOs are all hands on deck. Like they're working extra hours. They just expect something. And a lot of times along with that, you will see National Guard deployment. Um, so these are the kind of things that I'm looking for as potential road signs for something big is, is getting ready to happen. Or, or the government thinks something big is getting ready to happen. So Again, there are two two ways to go about it. Shelter in place, staying at home, uh, as I often call it, bunkering in because, hey, I'm obsessed with bunkers. It is what it is. Uh, it's a passion of mine, obsession of mine. So if I'm bunkering in, if, I'm, if I've made that decision, whether I'm in Seattle, whether I'm in Portland, New York City, 
Austin, Texas, wherever. I'm in a larger area, populated area, and I've made the decision to stay at home, to bunker in. Number one, I'm going to stack heavy. I'm going to stack heavier than I would if my plan is to go when that time comes, okay? I'm going to focus more on home defense. So if your plan is to bug out, why would you focus heavily on home defense? You want to make sure that day to day that you're safe and you got you know a way to protect yourself. But I mean, I'm really going to focus on home defense because that that's my fortress. If that's the plan, it's got to become a fortress. I'm thinking about grid failure, the possibility of the grid going down, the internet going down. How am I going to be able to prep and survive that? Uh, it's it's easy to do, but you have to you have to focus on a certain path of prepping, if you will. So at that point, I'm thinking I'm going heavy on batteries. I'm going heavy on on lanterns, candles, um, solar charging packs, and things for phones, all this sorts of stuff. And I'm also thinking about trash disposal, water purification, etc., comms, and things like this, because I'm. I, I need to be informed if I'm going to stay there, but realistically speaking, trash builds up. And realistically speaking, no matter how much water you have prepped up and stacked up, eventually it's going to run out. You have no idea how long you're going to be in the home, so you do need to focus on uh, water purification. Now, on the flip side of the coin, if your plan is to go, to bug out, you don't want to be stuck in an apartment or maybe you live in a bad part of town to begin with and you just know okay this is not a great place for me you know to to hold down the fort so to speak so bugging out i'm looking at this totally different okay you're going to need a legit bug out bag yes you can use a five dollar book bag from target that's on clearance sure but I'm thinking more seriously at this point because your life can hinge on the ability for this bag to do what it needs to do. I'm thinking, can I carry this bag right comfortably? Is this something that I can just throw on and go? And honestly, I'm on a level with y'all. And I gave this to my good buddy, John, if he's listening out there. When I first got into prepping and I was buying a lot of stuff, it happens, man. You you buy a lot of stuff that is cool and you think, hey, I, I need this, but you end up really not needing it. I got a marine rucksack. Um, it was at a surplus store. It was new, but it had been sitting around forever. It had the plastic rack and everything on it. Um, and this thing was huge. I mean, we're talking, for those that don't know, this thing was like half my half my height. And so I had a tendency to pack it out way too heavy. I I could barely carry this thing. I mean, it was a burden to carry and it was huge. It was going to draw a lot of attention. And eventually I figured, you know, I figured out I'm carrying a bunch of stuff here that I'm never going to use or probably don't need in the first place. I need to downsize and I dropped down to a black bag. I'll bring it out here sometime on camera, but, uh, I've shown it before. I dropped down to a black bag. It looks kind of like a laptop bag. It's about half the size and about half the weight. And it just doesn't draw attention. So this is something, if I'm bugging out in an area where there are hundreds of thousands or even millions of people living, and I know I'm anticipating this groundswell of a lot of people on the ground, you know, walking around, I don't want to carry a marine rucksack around. Again, it's going to draw a lot of attention, plus it's it's massive when you've got it packed out. I want to carry something small, something that is not going to draw, draw eyeballs, something I can move with quickly, okay? I'm going to practice also while I'm mentioning that being gray man. There's an art to being gray man, I think, and I, I don't know that anybody has it down perfectly, but it's avoiding eye contact with people that might draw suspicion, not dressing in such a way that's going to bring eyeballs, getting back to the rucksacks, but also hoodies and things like this, and and moving on the outside of the mob, if you will, and just trying to get around 
you want to look like you fit in, but you also want to constantly be moving past the threat. You don't want to hang around any longer than you have to. Um, if I'm bugging out, I want to know several routes out because the, the point is, and the purpose is here, in most cases, I'm trying to get out of the city, right? Things may be blocked off or there may be imminent danger somewhere. So I'm trying, I'm trying to learn several routes out of the city. And also I want to identify several spots once I get outside of the city, because it may take you all day or all night to get outside of the city. You're going to be tired. So once you get outside of the city, you need a place just to rest for a little while, maybe eat and stuff like this. And I want to make sure that I have a self-defense item uh, on me. Now, people are going to say whatever they're going to say about that. We've all got our preferred. I like the 1911, just saying. But so for some people that, you know, that means a great EDC knife. For other people, that's a huge walking stick or a cane sword or something like that. Um, here's some other things to consider if you're in a city and this situation may be coming, okay? I want to avoid major highways and gathering spots. I get it. Major highways are a quicker way out of the city. But we also need to understand they're going to be jam-packed if something is going down. And there may be a lot of threats, you know, within that crowd. Uh, gathering spots, this is going to be, you know, it's going to vary by city, but this is going to be places where there are going to be a lot of people. This is why I tell people, avoid, if there's a collapse, avoid your local Walmart Supercenter because every zombie out there wearing flip-flops with the Kate Spade pocketbook is immediately going to think Walmart. And they're going to immediately rush to Walmart. And so there's going to be so much foot traffic there. It's just a spot that you want to avoid. Uh, something else, the longer the wait, the more risk is involved. So if your plan is to just sit around for a while and, and hope things get better and then they don't, and you decide, you know, two, three hours after the chaos begins, it's going to be harder and more dangerous for you to get out of harm's way. So the longer you sit there trying to make a decision, the more... I would trend towards bunkering in at some point. Um, storage units. This is something that comes up time to time in chat. You know, certain people are in cities and they'll say, hey, I got a storage unit. I go both ways on this one. I can see where this would be a huge advantage. The only downside is getting there. Can I get to this storage unit? You know what I mean? Because you can hole up in a storage unit or somewhere nearby and you can use it as a supply cache and stuff like this if you can get there, you know, but if you have to go into the opposite direction, well, that's a bunch of money and time that you've spent for nothing. And there are probably preppers out there that have multiple storage units within the city in different directions, which is great if you can afford to do that. Then I'm thinking... Vehicle, bicycle, or on foot. Obviously, they have advantages, all three. A vehicle is going to draw the most attention. It has the, the biggest chance of being bogged down, I think, during you know a chaos event. Same time, it's the quickest way to get from point A to point B, and you've got some shelter uh, you know, from rain and snow and stuff like this, depending on what the weather is. Bicycle is going to be faster than on foot. A lot of people prefer the bicycle. I still, I can see where it would have advantages after a collapse, but during a collapse, I think there needs to be a heightened sense of security and, and situational awareness. And I just feel like on a bike, you're totally exposed. You know what I mean? Maybe you're really good at driving one hand and you got that self-defense item out. Who knows? But But in most cases... You're riding like this, you're totally exposed. I would almost rather go on foot at that point. Have petty cash on you. May or may not be of any value at that point. Who knows, but have a little bit just in case. You know, maybe you get several neighborhoods over. The chaos hasn't hit there yet. You can go in and out of a quick store or something like that. And maybe some barter on you as well. This does not mean 
You have to look like the medicine man rolling up in Dodge City back on Gunsmoke or something. You don't need a, a wagon of barter riding. Just one simple thing. You know, throw a couple of silver bullion uh, in your bag, maybe. Throw a good bottle of whiskey in there if you don't want to do silver. Something like that or some vodka or something. Something that you can barter off if it comes right down to it. Um, and finally, will the dark? Work to your advantage or disadvantage. This is something that I think you have to consider, you know, uh, and plan accordingly. If you if you're worried about it and you think it's not going to be safe at night, you need to plan accordingly. You need to make sure in that case that you have great self defense and the safest routes picked out possible, et cetera, et cetera. So stay or go determines your prepping. When you get right down to it, in a city situation an urban situation for us rural folks it's it's a lot different but stay again bunkering in i'm thinking the most calories for the buck when i'm prepping when i'm stacking food okay so if i know that i'm gonna stay and i'm on a budget which i absolutely absolutely am y'all i'm thinking canned food and I, i'm thinking stuff that i can get from the local store dollar tree even as far as preps are concerned, whatever's going to feed me the longest amount of time as cheaply as possible. Um, there's going to be a heavier focus and emphasis on water. I need to stack a lot more water if I'm going to be at home long term. You've got to become defensive minded. Again, you always want to be locking your doors and stuff, but but really and truly, it's got to become a fortress at some point. And comms comes into the situation, I think. Comms is debatable, uh, bugging out, but I think if you're going to bunker in, you need information. This doesn't necessarily mean you have to communicate out. A lot of people don't want to do that because of triangulation and stuff, but you want to have a great emergency radio that is solar, that is battery charged, that is crank operated, so you can get information at your fortress, right? Information is going to be paramount. If you're going, if you're bugging out, then at this point, I'm thinking better gear. Better gear is the focus. I want a really, really good pair of boots. I want a really, really good coat that is not going to stand out, but it's going to keep me warm and, and you know, can double as a pillow or whatever the case may be. I want a really good everyday carry knife. There's, there's a more focus on gear. I don't want cheap gear if I'm going to have to to put my life in the hands of this gear. Um, at this point, when I'm stacking food, I'm kind of getting away from canned food a little bit. I think it's still good to have at home, but the focus then turns for me to MREs and the bagged survival food, you know, that you just put hot water in and, and eat it up. It's a lot faster, you know, cliff bars and things like this, a lot faster. I'm going to be on the move. Not going to have time to sit here and soak beans for hours on end. You, you get it. Um, there's a bigger focus on the, the areas nearby. You should know a little bit about the areas nearby anyway. You should definitely know your own neighborhood. But if I'm bugging out and I'm thinking about different routes and stuff, I want to know about the neighborhoods nearby. Where are the hot spots for trouble? Where are the troublemakers live? You know, where the peaceful neighborhoods and things, because it's going to make it easier to get out. And finally, I'm thinking about if I'm bugging out, I need enough on me to survive for 72 hours, because I think 72 hours is a pretty good window to get out of a city. At that point, if you hadn't gotten out of the city within the first 72 hours, you may not get out of the city. At that point, you may be looking for a spot to kind of uh, bunker down in. 72 hours meaning, you know, do I have enough food on me to feed me uh, instantly for 72 hours? Do I have enough water uh, or at least a capable water bottle? Do I know about several sources? Can I purify it? This sort of thing. Uh, so, you know, just some stuff to think about when it comes to surviving the horde, right? Because I really do think some of the cities out there are going to experience this as the election draws near. Now, which cities? Hey, I don't know. I don't know that. But if you're in a populated area, something, you know, that's considered a city, I would definitely 
be dialing it in because you you have a few months still yet until the election. So let me know what y'all think in the comments. Take care and God bless.